Now, we'll walk through the creation of a slightly more complex node network that makes use of our phi wrapped node from the previous section. However, this time, instead of just one object, we'll be creating multiple objects. We'll start by grabbing the rectangle node from the marionette tool from the objects rectangle section and place that in the drawing near our already created phi wrapper node. This time, we'll leave the orientation unconnected, which means it'll use its default of 1, 0. For the width input connection, we're going to specify a range of values instead of just one, so that in the end, we'll create a range of rectangles. Select the range node from the data flow section of the marionette tool. Place that somewhere to the left of the rectangle nodes, since output from it will be connected to the input of the rectangle node. Give yourself plenty of space to work. You can always move them closer later. A range node allows you to specify start and end values, normally added as real input nodes, and a count, added as an int or integer node. So, if we started with 0 and ended with 10, but had a count of 5, the output of this node would be 6 separate values, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Remembering that the list count, or indices, start with 0, not 1. This means that a count of 5 will produce 6 values, 0 through the 5th value. Rather than adding input nodes directly to the rectangle node, we'll be giving input to the range node, and that node will pass its results to the rectangle. If we didn't connect any input nodes to the range node, it would simply output the value 1. Add two real input nodes, and one int or integer input node from the marionette tool. Connecting the real input nodes to the range node's start and stop connections. Then, connect the int node to the range node's count, like so. Give the start real node a value of 0, and the stop real node a value of 5. For the int node, input a value of 6. Since we just told it we wanted more count values than there are whole numbers between 0 and 5, it will split the whole numbers up, giving us 0, 0 0.8, 1.7, 2.5, 3.3, and 5, as 7 separate values. You'll see where this comes in shortly. Now, connect the list output from the range node to the rectangle node's width connection. If we were to connect the list output to the height output as well, which we can go ahead and do now and run the script just to see what happens, we would get rectangles, but they'd be configured as squares, since they have the same width and height, of course. Since we gave it no orientation or coordinate parameters, they're all created with the default of their bottom left corner at 0, 0 in your document. Back to the script, and disconnect the list output from the height input by clicking the selection handle at the end of the connection and simply clicking again in an empty space. Now, we're going to bring in our phi equation, but if we just connected it right to the height field, we'd get this. Go ahead and run that now. A series of rectangles of the same height, phi, which on its own is simply 1.618 repeating, etc., but with a range of widths from the range node. This is useful, however, we want to do something a little different. Disconnect the phi node from the rectangle node. Then, in the marionette tool, bring in a mull or multiplication node from the math section. Then, connect the range's list output to the input of the mull node. Note that we can take outputs from a single node and use them as input to many other nodes. This allows you to reduce how many nodes you need in total, as if you didn't do this, you would need another cluster of real, int, and range nodes each time you wanted that same range of outputs. Connect the output of phi to the b input on the multiplication node. Then, connect the c output of the multiplication node to the height input on the rectangle node. What we've done now is give the rectangles a list of values for their various widths, but for their height, we've taken that same range and multiplied each resulting value from the range by phi, which will give us multiple rectangles all using the golden ratio, no matter what values we change in the range. Go ahead and right-click anywhere in the marionette network then choose Run Marionette Script. We get a rectangle fill. This actually created multiple rectangles, as with the other examples. If we edit the resulting group, we can see them located underneath. The largest one is on top, obscuring the others. We want to add transparency to these rectangles so we can see them all at once, no matter which one is on top. 
To do this, we'll use an Attributes node. In the Marionette tool, in the Attributes section, select the first node type listed, simply Attributes. Place this to the right of the Rectangle node and connect the output. Select the Attribute node. Note that there aren't any attribute settings in the Object Info palette. How are we to determine what attributes are applied to our rectangles? Anytime you come across a node whose function isn't immediately obvious, click the Description button located in the Object Info palette with that node selected. And there, that makes sense. We only need to apply whatever attributes we desire directly to the Attributes node itself to pass them onto the object. Simple enough. With the Attributes node selected, in the Attributes palette, give the node a solid fill. Then, pick any color you like for the fill color itself. Then, set the opacity to 50% to give us the needed transparency. Go ahead and run the script again after you do this. That will do it for this section. In the next, we'll cover how to create an object node and configure it to allow us to control the values within any desired nodes directly from the Object Info Palette.